premise of zero trust architecture. We don't trust anything that's connecting to the network. We're going to profile that endpoint. We're going to figure out what it is and then apply some policy to it so that it's you know, got some controls around it and some auditing capability and so on so we know what it's doing as it goes across the network. That reminds me of the day of we're going to write a really strict access list and the access list shall only have the IPs. And it sh- and then eventually after you get live with that hell for <laughs> six months, you're like, screw this, permit IP any, any at the beginning. We're going to start logging things and figure out who's hitting what. And someday we're going to get back to it and you never do. And it's an access list that does nothing. Well, Zero Trust Architecture has got that same vibe to me where it's going to be so hard to get the endpoint profiling, right? Especially in this work from home environment. You don't know what network people are coming from. You don't necessarily know what endpoint they're coming from. You might, depending on your policies, but it's just, it's going to be too hard. And so you got a lot of network vendors selling us zero trust architecture as a thing. And it just feels like some people are going to believe in it. It's going to suck and we're going to give up on it and kind of go back to where we were. So let's start there. What's your take on that? Okay. (laughs) So that's a lot, right? Uh, Zero trust architecture, right? And um, I'm a big proponent of zero trust architecture. I think it's a great idea. Um, I think high level, it's going to take organizations a long time to, from a governance perspective alone, to be okay with it. Because you're talking about tracking of everything, um, all data, as much data as possible so that you can make decisions on that data. Um, So zero trust architecture has a lot of components in it, a lot of capabilities. Um, like AI and, and, you know, so artificial intelligence, machine learning, analytics, uh, a true single point uh, uh, inventory of all resources in, in your environment. Um, and those resources specifically are not just devices. It can be devices and it is devices and it's servers, but it's also applications and workflows and data. But it's also more than just the information about that, those, those resources. It's also the lateral movement of those resources. So what are those resources doing today? And what are they supposed to be or are they allowed to do? And so all that was a lot, right? That's the that whole concept. It's a lot to uh, take in. Uh, and it's also a, a lot to implement. So there's a step process you can do. Um, and I think, I think we have to get away from which device are you connecting on? I think that's a, a limitation that I would say, let's, let's, let's take a step back, right? Like you have some way of authenticating um, and does it matter necessarily what device you're leveraging to authenticate through your well, environment? T- depends on which vendor you're talking to, because some of them are still quite device oriented and that's how they present their solution. But okay, so you're arguing we know who you are, so it's identity as opposed to device. Well, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, you could still do device, right? I'm not saying, I was just trying to make it a little bit easier to, to walk through that workflow. Um, okay. So you can still catch the device, right? You can still identify it, profile it, make sure it's your device. Um, it's easier on certain devices than other devices, right? There's always going to be that. There's some devices are easier to identify. It's in our inventory. We know it's ours. Okay, mm-hmm. this user authenticated. We know we can give this user specific access. I think in the future, what you're going to see is that, um, yes, we care about the device and we care about the user, but we care more about limiting what they're accessing to only what they need to have access to versus what they want to have access to. And I think that's going to take time. That's going to take the analytics engines. That's going to take people to actually make the decisions on, yes, this application only does these things, right? Like, but, and you think that's, that's, you think that's really going to get us, you think it's really going to happen. I, well, you, you've invoked, You've invoked artificial intelligence and machine I learning. I did. Well, and maybe that is the only way that it happens. Because, of course, in the old days, we didn't have any of that stuff. It was we built policies in the form of really ugly, granular lists and then lived with the misery of maintaining them by hand, which is impossible. And so AI and ML, maybe that gets us there. Well, that's a, that's a founding uh, pillar of zero trust. Mm. You can't, you can't, in my opinion, and I'm sure people are going to yell at me about this. I'm going to get nasty Twitter messages, I'm sure, but I don't believe you can fully do zero trust without AI and ML. And that's also why some companies are going to have a hard time because you have to let go a little bit, right? You have to be okay with your analytics engine, whatever that is doing the AI and ML work. And it's going to suggest things. You got to let it do its thing. Um, Now you're never going to see that in all organizations, right? Okay, so let's let's apply this to network design. So what you just described is a massive problem of observability. I've got all these endpoints scattered all over the place. 
where am I looking? And then as I'm doing that looking, where am I gathering all of the stuff I'm looking at, metadata, flow records, packet captures, whatever it might be, so I can make some intelligent decisions? Well, I mean, I think each each vendor solution probably has its own way of doing it, right? Um, but if I take a, a vendor agnostic approach, you pretty much are going to be logging that information on these network devices that you have in your inventory, not your inventory, in your network, right? So your access switches are going to be that first line of identifying, hey, this is what this device is doing. And on that access device, right then and there, you can identify that, hey, this device is not supposed to be doing that. So block it or restrict yeah, see, it. See, I disagree with that very, very strongly. I think that's how we do it now. And I think very in the very, very near future, you're going to be identifying devices by a VPN client that's installed locally. So another right? agent? Yes. So come back yeah. to your software defined perimeter. You'll be putting a VPN style client into your device. And regardless of whether it's connected to 5G or the campus or your local coffee shop or your, you know, whatever, that is where it'll be. And the campus network, which is today this high feature functionality, secured environment with overlay networks and edge detection. I think that's a transition that was needed 10 years ago, but didn't happen because vendors didn't want to upset the, they wanted to grab profits and do as little work as profit possible. And then realized that nobody was going to upgrade the campus. And it's now become a thing to get into, you know, Rist is now into campus, Juniper's into campus. And I think the real future is the campus is just a, a cheap way to share an internet pipe inside of an office block. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Because yes. now it's become a different question. What campus? Yeah. yeah. yeah there is yeah. no campus, right? There is no spoon. Now, having right? said that, <laughs> there are definitely campi. Is that the plural for campus? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, though. I don't know. <laughs> there are some people's campuses who definitely need a physical problem. So if you're a hospital and you've got a 25-year-old yes. CAT scan machine. or So there are definitely exceptions to this rule. The, the future is not evenly distributed. And there will be sales of this campus technology where it does what you say, you know, perimeter detection, identifying the device, tr routing traffic into an overlay so that it can be inspected somewhere, blah, blah, blah but it's not going to be everybody's solution. It's only going to be a niche solution in yeah. the market overall. So there's a big debate. Uh, if you are following any of the zero trust kind of forums and, and discussions, the architectural discussions, there's a big debate on, do we put another agent on the end device or do we make that first hop network device be the, per, the point of presence of that, that zero trust, whatever, right? The capability, the, the logging, the, uh, um, the feedback mechanism, the authentication, the authorization, the policy enforcement point, all those things. Um, and, and, and I could also have a perspective here where my customers have 20 different agents on their computers today. And so I've always been a big proponent of not putting another agent on their computer because they're already bogged down. They already have issues today and, and they just don't function for the users. So I would rather not do that. But now if we go to a but future from, where one agent's applied on a, on a computer, I think that would be a lot better than having 20 different agents on their computer. But from an architectural perspective, though, if we step back away from the problem that agents suck, no one wants to deploy <laughs> them, we don't want them bogging the machine down and all of that. And we'd think about it logically and go, okay, well, if I had to design this from scratch, then I'd put it on that endpoint because that endpoint can then jump off of wherever it is and go wherever it needs to via whatever access mechanism it's going to use. And I can still gather metadata and understand what it's doing. And, and if I need to push policy here to stop it from doing what it's doing, I can do that. That's the place to do it, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's so much flexible, right? You have the flexibility to do what you want from any any aspect, security, intent, application. Um, I don't know if something like that exists today where you can actually throw down uh, that that no, agent. Everyone calls it agent list now, right? But agent um, and, and do that, right? Uh, you, you can connect anywhere. And then I think even further, if we, we think of it a little bit further than that, right? You could even do some sort of VPN connections where you do like spoke to spoke VPN connections. If you wanted to have some sort of connection between someone else, it's secure. Um, yeah. You have a lot of options with something like that. I could just like see that developing. Yeah.